Well, let's take you back into Ukraine now and talk to Zainish Hussein, who lives in the city of Kherson, the first major city to fall into Russian hands. Zainish, welcome. First of all, uh, what's been happening where you are? And when you look outside where you live, what do you see? Well, things have changed uh, dramatically in the last 48 hours. Uh, what we have seen before was bombing that was happening out of the city. You will hear loud bangs, but you are not eyewitnessing anything. So things changed. Tomorrow morning, I woke up under loud mechanical sounds, and then I went to the window and I saw these tanks and Russian soldiers. They're firing these warning shots uh, with their machine guns or whatever they have, uh, warning people to get inside their homes. And and it was complete chaos, people running inside. A couple of hours, they stayed there, and then they were gone. They were regular patrolling, streets were silent. Uh, I believe that they reached some agreement with the city administration last evening, and things were a bit calm today. There were people outside uh, trying to get food, supplies, and you know groceries for themselves. Uh, but we have clear rules. There are curfew hours after 6 o'clock. You cannot be outside. A bunch of other rules that have been introduced. The city has, uh, is completely under Russian control, for sure. Yeah. We're watching uh, the pictures that you posted uh, online on your uh, Twitter feed showing those uh, tanks rolling through the streets and the, the soldiers uh, on the road. I, I can't imagine to think what that was like when you looked out of your apartment window and you saw that. I mean... What did you think? How did it, how did it feel? I mean, uh, looking out the window and looking at the tanks, just like literally 10, 20 meters away from your place, and knowing that probably they, these are the tanks who have shelled the civilian buildings a couple of days before. And this is when you think, like, maybe it's over. Maybe, maybe they're going to do the same to us. And specifically looking at the soldiers, I mean, the way they were treating civilians, I mean, being that close to a soldier that you feel that you probably killed innocent civilians like me just a couple of days ago, it is a very scary thing, especially being with a family, you have a three years old daughter. Uh, it is terrifying. Like, I, I don't have right words to explain this, actually, the right feelings. I just wonder how you are coping, because I know that your, your wife is obviously with you and your young daughter. I mean, what, what do you say to them? Do you have enough clean water? Do you have enough, do you have enough food to keep going? Uh, the supply situation is bad. So it's like hunting for food every day. You wake up every morning and you run to the nearby markets to see if you have anything because they, the supplies have been cut off. Like they're, they're not getting any more supplies. So there are empty shelves. There are hundreds of people standing in the queue. You don't have a choice to just grab your hand on anything that you see, whether it's a chocolate or a packet of rice or some potatoes, like anything that will keep you alive. That is the thing. Talking about daughter, I mean, she's three years old and she won't understand all of this. So we try to keep her occupied uh, with cartoons and with uh, earphones around her ears so that she does not hear all these things, terrible things that are happening outside. So indeed, I mean, I, this is the only child I have and we are learning things every day. And then suddenly with the war in, standing in front of you, I, I, I kind of felt lost actually and terrified for sure. The world is watching. What is your message to the West? Uh, the wars and uh, the political stuff, it keeps happening. But what I heard from the military side is that someone needs to cover our skies and they can win this. This is the first thing. For civilians, you need to do something for the basics, like for medicine, for food and something like that. And third thing is a green corridor. No one speaks about it. There should be an exit, a safe exit for people who want to leave with their children, just like me. I can't imagine being on a road in the middle of war with my three years old daughter, but someone can do something. Those people who want to peacefully leave, give them a green corridor. This is the message that I have for people. Zainish Hussein, we wish you well. Thank you very much for talking to us, and we hope to speak to you again in the coming days. But for the moment, uh, Zainish Hussein in the Ukrainian city of Kherson, thank you very much. Thank you.